So, hi everyone, and thank you for being with us today on such an important day, the premiere of MDB in the UK. My name is Steve McManus, and I'm delighted to present to you today. In addition to having the opportunity for you guys to see Charlie Gray at work, we wanted to take this opportunity to tell you firsthand who we are and what we stand for. MDB Education was born in October 2016 in Spain with a clear mission to democratise training and make it accessible to all professionals anytime, anywhere. A great majority of you, besides being hairdressers, are entrepreneurs too, and that is why, aligned to our mission of professionalising the sector, our training is focused on technical training, but also business training as well. As a result of this work, focusing on knowledge transfer and the support of more than 134,000 professionals who train with us each and every single day, MDB Education has become the leading training platform in the Spanish and Latin American markets. And now, as you can see, we've made the leap into the English speaking market. And that's something that we're really, really excited about. As of today, we have in MDB Education, 530 online classes with more than 294 hours of teachings. We have diplomas and step-by-steps that you can download as well as masterclasses to learn in-depth education about key techniques. And we produce content and release content every single week. As always, our efforts are focused on bringing the best content from the best hairdressers to you. Through our subscription model, for only 99 euros a year, all professionals will have access to more than 520 training videos with new content every single week covering technical and business areas. These trainings are delivered by more than 90 internationally awarded professionals. Unlike other platforms, each MDB education training course comes with an exam that will let you know if you've acquired the learnings from that training. That diploma will be issued to you and you'll also get a step-by-step -step guide for each training and the possibility to ask questions to our creative and artistic team. If you're interested in accessing all this exclusive content, then you can enter the coupon CUT in the subscription process on our website and this will give you a 70% discount off of the monthly plan. Head over to mdbeducation.com forward slash gift and claim your discount now. As I said earlier, today we have the pleasure of having Charlie Gray, the founder of Hair in Motion and an ambassador for Leaf Scissors with us. How are you, Charlie? Yeah, I'm great. Good to see it's you. Great to Good be to here. See you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. And uh, tell me, what's your plan today? What are you doing today with, uh, with your model's hair? Yes, as you can see, the model that I'm working with has the longer length. Um, and I think this is perceived to be difficult in men's hair. And a lot of people that focus on men's hair or just cut men's hair kind of struggle with this length hair. So what I wanted to do is really bring a model in where I can simplify and approach this length hair and really help people build a much stronger relationship with this type of hair. Yeah, I think I, I completely get that. I'm excited mm. to see it. I think there's a yeah. lot of people where at this sort of length, it would be um, daunting for them to know where, what steps to take, right? It's strange that there's that placebo about this type of length yeah. hair when really it's probably more simple than working with shorter length hair, to be honest with you. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of want to present that to, to people that are watching this. Amazing. Uh, so Charlie, let's get started. So I suppose sectioning wise, how are you going to go about sectioning and, and so on? Yeah, so before I approach any haircut, whether it's long, medium or short hair, um, what I tend to do is kind of plan the haircut in my head and then separate it into certain divisions which will allow me to approach the haircut in a more of a simple way. Okay. Um, when I'm working with longer length hair, generally I'll start to work with the front area and then the back area of the head. Okay. So, an important area to section off would be the highest position on the top of the head, which is where the apex lays. Okay. So you you take you take time and effort at the beginning to section and to, to make it clear on what parts of the hair you're gonna work on. Yeah. To, to to simplify your process further further down the haircut, is that right? Yeah, exactly. And I think especially with men's hair, what I found um, teaching people over the years is they actually think that that adds time onto the haircut, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is a really um, narrow-minded way of looking at things. When I think once you've really studied the craft of cutting hair, any beautiful, great haircut that's ever been cut has been planned and executed in a systematic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which means that you need to section out a haircut and divide it into smaller sections to be able to focus on each and every individual section yeah. more so. Yeah. So is that that preparation time in in the beginning might feel like you're going through a longer process, but in the end, it just saves you time it and makes you it. more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's 
it's, it's like me going into anything, you know, unless you plan something and approach it in a way that you are confident and you're working in small sections and small pieces, it, it could be easy to get lost and lose your way and, yeah. and, and, and things become messy yeah. and you don't have much um, discipline within your work. So yeah. yeah, taking that two to five minutes of sectioning and planning a haircut out at the start will only benefit you in the long term in the haircut and okay. potentially um, shrink the size of the haircut okay. in terms of time. And I suppose that also means that you've spent time before thinking about the desired result. You know, that's really clear in your mind, right? Like where you want this haircut to be. Yeah, no doubt. Obviously, that comes into consultation. So, yeah. you know, I, I will have had a good chat with my model here about what he wants to achieve with his hair at the moment. Then I'll take a good look um, and evaluate the hair itself, evaluate the style, eva evaluate the head shape, yeah. and all of these factors that come into how I'm, how I'm going to approach the haircut. Um, and then I will make my decision on what we're going to do. You know, then we'll come to a compromise with me and the client. Um, and this is all within the consultation process, again, which should be about five minutes long on average. Okay. And then it will be down to me to how I approach that. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So that, that that kind of and again, like I've seen, I've had debates with hairdressers in the past where I've argued that if you're spending less than five minutes on a consultation, you probably haven't done the consultation right. Yeah. Um, and I've had people say to me, well, I can do it much faster. <laughs> and um, I mean, yeah, they definitely debate is the right word, I think. Um, but I think that there is a lot to be said about understanding the client's needs through consultation and then that building your plan. Right. Yeah, I mean, for me, the power of the consultation is one of the most powerful tools that you can actually have as a hairdresser. Yeah. Um, and it's where things will either go very right or very wrong <laughs> yeah. um, at the end of the haircut. Yeah. And that won't be necessarily the client's fault 99% um, of the time. <laughs> you know, yeah. Occasionally you have the odd, the odd time where yeah, maybe you feel like you've done what you've talked about and the client doesn't like it, etc. Yeah. But most of the time you can avoid them situations by actually having an in-depth consultation at the start where you feel confident um, in what you're doing and the client has complete clarity in what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Um, the only part after that is then cutting it well. Yeah, you know, Which we should all be trained enough to do that. Yeah. Um, but consultation, yeah, like I said, it's something that I've been teaching for many years to um, students and, and, um, and people and they don't realise how powerful it is until they learn the process. Yeah, definitely. And the one thing um, before I ask you about the sectioning was from a consultation point of view, which I always felt was super important, mm. was the ability to listen, not just the ability to speak, right? Like to mm. understand the client's needs when they maybe don't know exactly how to articulate them in the way that we're used to. Yeah, I think um, as hairdressers, most of us love to talk a yeah. lot because <laughs> we have because we do it most of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, the key to becoming a great hairdresser is to listen to the clients. Yeah. So yeah, just I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, listening is one of the most powerful tools that you can have as well. So, in, in, life. Yeah. in life. In life. Yeah, yeah, in life. Not just in hairdressing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So tell me a bit more about what you've done. So I've seen you've mapped out some shapes already. So tell me a bit more about sectioning wise, what you've done and why you've done it. Yeah, so as you can see so far, what we've created is we've worked that, um, that apex section, which runs from the highest point of the head. Um, the reason why I know it's the highest point of the head is because if we hold a flat object like a comb against the head, I can see that where the head starts to move away from the comb is right on the top here, right. okay? So that's a really nice indication of where the top of the head is. It's gonna be in different positions depending on what client head shape that you're working on obviously yeah. this generically runs just behind the ear area um, which then can separate the back area of the head which is very rounded and dips in at the neck and then the much flatter surface areas on the top and the side panels okay so this is a really nice way to start off by sectioning it really separates the back and the front and then depending on what you're trying to achieve with any type of haircut on these longer length styles, generically, I would work more of a kind of box section um, through the top and then work these side panels um, into the length around the edges. Okay. So you can manipulate and work these sections slightly differently depending on the shape of the head. Mm. But it's a very nice, easy um, section and pattern to follow for this mm. longer length hair. And again, very simple to, to achieve. And I guess, I, just, I think I, because it follows the curvature of the head so well that you're going to be more aligned with it after cutting, behaving in a way that's kind of suitable because it's going to follow the natural growth patterns, right? Yeah, I think where people get 
um, confused with sectioning and how to section haircuts is where to place the sections. Yeah. And most of the time, again, we're not trying to overcomplicate the haircut by sectioning. We're trying to simplify it. Yeah. So we're, most of the time when we're sectioning, we're working with the shape and the surfaces yeah. on the client's head. And that's kind of simply it, yeah. to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. And I think that simplicity is important to touch on because I know when I started hairdressing a long, long time ago, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we I remember being um, trying to be too clever, I think is probably what I should say. So I remember taking like 15 sections yeah. and then essentially probably pulling them all up and cutting them square, right? Doing exactly yeah. the same thing. And my teacher saying to me that, you know, you just made your life harder, not easier through sectioning. And mm. sectioning is about creating simplicity for you rather than trying to look like you're clever. Exactly. So I think it depends on what angle you look at it at. You know, if someone maybe has a negative spin on sections um, and doesn't quite understand them, it's maybe because they've seen things or been taught things a way that don't quite make sense to them. Yeah. But once you open their eyes up to simplifying things with sections, yeah. things start to make a lot more sense and start to click. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so where we're going to start on the haircut is actually going to be through the back panel. Um, and the reason why that is, is because one, it's the biggest surface area and zone that we're actually going to be working through on the haircut. And two is because it's going to be the focal point of the haircut. On these kind of longer length hairstyles, men generally um, tend to either tie it back um, around this roundness area of the haircut and tie it up, or they will tuck the hair behind the ears and wear all that weight behind the ears sitting there. So this kind of the, is the main focal point of the haircut okay. and it's the biggest surface area. So for me, I would want to always start around the back area when I'm working with this type of haircut. Yeah, great, yeah. Makes, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the hair is generally consistently wet, working from the roots through to the ends. And we're gonna comb it all the way down and what's important to understand and study is where the weight is sitting when we comb it flat against the head, okay? Because mm. this is going to determine what shape and what length we take the back to. Okay. So if we pull a bit of hair out at the top there and we see where it starts to sit, we can see where this top layer here is sitting just on top of the occipital bone, which yeah. is where the hair, sorry, the head shape protrudes the most through the back. So if this top layer is sitting on top of the area that sticks out the most, it's only going to expand that area a lot yeah. and it will then make it look like there's a big dip in at the neck area. Okay. Okay. So at the moment we've got, when it's, when it's dried and it's got that natural movement in, we've got a lot of weight sitting around this band. Yeah. Then we lose a lot of the shape and then we have this little flick out at the bottom. Yeah. Um, okay. Which in some aspects I quite like, yeah. but long term. Um, we need to kind of reshape that a little bit better. Um, what I like to generally see with longer length hair on men is more of that kind of one length fill um, as all the weight will be sitting on the baseline at the bottom of the head okay. and you won't have these kind of like wave shaped curls in the hair at all. So am I right in thinking that you're essentially trying to reduce the appearance of the natural head shape? Is that, have I got that right? Like trying yeah. to, to, to stop it having that kind of that question round, mark. Yeah, that kind of oh, round yeah. and then flick yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I okay. kind of don't want that. So yeah. realistically, what I'm looking to do is keep and maintain an area of this back area yeah. and shorten and reduce the okay. other side of it. Okay. And this is a really good example of learning when to cut hair and when learning when to leave hair to get the result that you want. And I think as hairdressers, we tend to want to feel like we need to cut most of the hair on the head for the client to feel like he's kind of getting the service or okay. the haircut that he's coming yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the case, you know. No. As we, the more experience you get, the more you realize that actually sometimes you need to cut less than what you even imagined. Um, sorry, you, you need to cut less rather than cutting more and actually you get a much better result. As long as you're in tune with the client and you're communicating and he understands you know, what result you're trying to get, he, he, he's not gonna care how much hair you take off because it's not about what you take off, it's about what you leave on ultimately. Yeah, completely. It? So yeah. that's what's left on the head when they yeah, leave, Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah of course. exactly. Yeah. You, you he's don't not, sweep it he's up. Not, he's not counting how much hair he's got on the floor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and that's kind of the end goal there, yeah. really. But I know when you first get on the shop floor and you do first cut, first start cutting, you kind of want to do the best that you can and your intention is good, but you almost overdo things too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, from my perspective. That makes a lot, and that comes with experience though, right? Yeah. Do you feel like with experience you simplify your processes because you um, you can see that complexities don't help. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, are definitely, scenarios, there are definitely times to be complex yeah, and technical. Yeah. Um, if you're doing something highly creative where you need to be more creatively thinking, but yeah. you know, 
the haircut that we're doing here is generally quite salon friendly yeah. um, and is quite popular. So we don't want to be spending an hour and a half technically cutting this haircut um, in the salon. We want to simplify the process and we're working with a lot of hair on the head here. The more hair on the head that you're working with, the more simpler the process you want it to be, um, to be effective. And do you think that men's hair has become more, do you think things have become a more simpler process? Do you think it's kind of, um, how do I word that? Do you, do you think that men's hair has moved to a point where it's much more uh, about simplicity than complexity? Yeah, for sure. I think um, many years ago, maybe like seven, eight years ago, um, there was quite a big divide in the hairdressing industry. There was, there was the women's salons, the men's barbershops. You'd go to the men's barbershops generally for like kind of clipper work haircuts. Yeah. And a lot of guys were still going to hairdressers for longer length hairstyles, more scissor work. Yeah. It was, it was, there was always that divide. And in the last kind of five, six years, we've seen a big um, you know, emergence of kind of men's hairdressers and, 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 and that kind of crossover between the barbering and hairdressing world, which needed to happen massively for a long time yeah. because of like current trends and, and the way that men feel about themselves and look after themselves in kind of modern era we're now finding that men want to um, look after themselves more they want to spend more money on their looks and and, and how they feel yeah. generally and they want to kind of pay more money to get a better service yeah so it's kind of raised the standards of barber shops and it's allowed that crossover from hairdressers and barbers to kind of be able to do each other's work with with the same type of clients rather than having that separation and divide great so I read the other day just to throw a stat in there <laughs> because I love them, uh, that um, I read the other day that men, the men's grooming world has grown in the last four years by 500%. <laughs> wow. Which is yeah, mad, that doesn't, right? that doesn't surprise me. I remember hearing a stat a few years ago that was, you know, like on par with that, but obviously it's expanded even more now. It's mad. It's mad. Yeah. And, and, and you see that if you go down any street, especially in London, there's always at least a few barbershops yeah. or hairdressers, yeah. you know, there now. And it's, it's only growing as an industry. Which is amazing, right? I yeah. think it's such a great thing. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, there's only more and more people um, in existence than there ever has been in the yeah. entirety of the world, yeah. you know. So there's always going to be more people needing haircuts um, and business should always be thriving. And it's become more socially acceptable, I think, for, for guys to really care about how they look, right? Yeah, I think, I think we've gone way so. past that stage yeah, now. I think, I think a few years ago, a it was a bit more now. like there was a few people in the group that did that and a few people were still like kind of holding off and a bit old school, but now yeah. it's like, Everyone it's wants to look and so feel normalized good. Yeah, it's now. normalized, yeah. which yeah. is great um, yeah. for us as an industry yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and for the men as well, so yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going on to the back, we're going to start cutting the back area now. Again, remember, we're looking to retain the length through here, and we're looking to slightly shorten the length through the back. Now, I could approach this in a few different ways. One of the ways that I could approach this is by generally cutting the length up through the back first, almost a bit like a one length on the woman's haircut, and then maybe go in to texturize it a little bit after. Um, that would be a, a good way to approach it, um, but I'm gonna approach it in a slightly different way, as I'm not necessarily looking to take too much length off the bottom, we're looking to more change the shape and reduce the weight, and that's kind of done more internally in the haircut. Okay. When I say internally, I mean the hair that's on the internal shape rather than the external line. Okay, Yeah. That makes sense. So the way that we're gonna do that, is by pulling the hair out in this vertical section through the middle of the head. And we're going to be trying to keep as much of this length here at the top, which is where, the, sorry, the length I want to keep. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be angling my fingers inwards to the, to the, um, to the neckline with my knuckles. Okay. So I'm technically graduating in some of the hair here okay. in towards the neck. So we're gonna be bringing up a little bit of length, um, but not focusing on taking too much off. But all of the weight underneath the length at the top will be reduced. So there we go. If I hold that there, we can see that the length at the top is in my fingertips, and then you can see it becomes more and more hair as it goes into my knuckle area towards the bottom of the neck. So there we go. So again, we're not taking masses of hair off, but the, the hair that we do take off will be impactful on the amount of weight that's sitting below the occipital bone. Okay. And a good way to do this is just by turning that scissor over, working it in that eastern grip, and it will allow you to get right into the bottom of the neck without any ease on the wrist there. I was yeah. just about to ask you about your scissor grip, actually, because it's, um, you described it as the eastern grip, and you choose to do that to, to look after your wrist, is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's been an emerging kind of way to hold your scissors in the last few years. Yeah. Um, it's not, so 
some people see it as fancy cutting and stuff, but I, I rarely use it. But if I need to use it, like now I'm working right into the base of the neck at quite a steep angle. Yeah. Um, so if I were to try and get that with my kind of classic way of holding a scissor, I would be having to Your bend body. my legs quite a lot. Yeah. And my, the, that stress on my wrist right there is a little bit more so than if I was to flip the scissor over, my wrist is now completely straight yeah. and I can work that very comfortably into the neck. So it's all about technique and discipline within the tools that you're using and how you use them. That's and I all think, it but I think it's super important as well because of like longevity of how long you, you can cut hair for and the, the impacts on your... Uh, on your on your wrist, on your shoulders, on your knees, your, you know, on your body. You know, so I think it's important to yeah, I, to I, I learn those things as well. I'm sure you agree. There's many people that cut hair that are maybe in their um, mid 40s, late 40s, 50s now, been cutting hair a long time, and every single one of them says, "I've got back, my back hurts," back, or yeah, 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 "This yeah. is that." So there's always ailments, and yeah. in some cases, yeah, you might not get away from that, um, but. In most cases, it's because it's been repetition of bad body posture yeah, and positioning completely. for many, many years. Completely. I'm just correcting my body position now. <laughs> and so those bad habits that develop, you can you can train yourself out of them though, right? If you try hard enough. Yeah, I mean, yep. again, it's just training the mind and training yep. the body to yep. do a certain thing. Um, it's like anything in life. The more you do it, the better you get at it and the more natural it becomes. Great. Yeah. So what we're doing now is we're now taking section two on the side and we're actually gonna over direct back to our first section. So we're just working a very small bit of over direction, section two into one, and we're gonna cut along that same guideline. And that will allow us to maintain horizontally a bit more of a square shape where we can retain that, that weight behind the ear. Okay, so on the flip side of that, if we were just to do a round shape and follow the head shape round and pull the hair out directly from the head, and, and, and cut the exact same line, we might find that we lose quite a bit of weight behind the ear and then almost create a bit of a hole. It's not what I want to do, okay? Remember, on this style, the hair is going to be combed backwards, tucked behind the ear, and we're going to have that weight sitting around there. So if we keep a square shape horizontally, that would allow us to maintain weight behind the ear. Great. So, um... I noticed that you finished your first section, Charlie, and moved and moved on to the next part. So what's, yeah. what's the next step in the process for you? So as I've just talked about the shape, we're going to be working horizontally um, square. We're still keeping the same guideline vertically. So now we're just working section two into one and making sure that we're keeping our sections quite consistent in terms of the depth. Okay. Normally I work with one finger's depth as I'm working through the sections as it just keeps everything really consistent. And if I do need to retrace my steps, then I know I can just work one finger, two finger, three finger, and I know exactly what section I should be on at that okay, point. Okay. Yeah. And then, are you, am I right thinking that you're bringing the section two back to section one, section three back to section two? Is that Correct, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just working back to previous, um, because we're working on a round surface yeah. um, through the back of the head here, just to maintain the length to keep it square. Yeah. We do need to use that little bit of over direction um, in our work. Yeah. yeah. Again, that would change if I was working on a flatter surface. Yeah. Say through the top of the head or through the side panels. Yeah. I wouldn't need to use so much over direction to maintain a square shape. Okay. Great. Yeah. And um, I've got a question for you, Charlie. So, in terms of um, education and educating yourself, what sort of steps do you take to kind of keep yourself kind of trend-wise moving forward, but also technique-wise moving forward? Well, simple answer to that, Steve, is practice. Um, I really make sure that I drill in practicing, um, whether it's on clients, whether it's in my spare time on mannequin heads. Practice yeah. makes perfection, yeah. you know? And um, if I didn't practice over the years, it doesn't matter how more experienced I feel in myself, I wouldn't have the ability that I have now today. Um, you know, you're never too good to practice something. No. And the beautiful thing about what we do is that we live, we work in an industry where there's so much that I still don't know. Yeah. Um, so keeping motivated and learning new things, I do a lot of um, shoots and kind of fashion work now with other people who are far more experienced and better in that sector than me. And there's so many things that they can do that I can't do, yeah. like braiding and, and all of these styling kind of techniques yeah. that I'm constantly trying to learn off of them. So okay. whether it's technically cutting or styling hair, there's there's so much more that I need to learn myself yeah. um, before I feel I'm completely competent in everything. And so you, you have this discipline to, to make time for, for self-development. I think it's important too, yeah. yeah. Um, 
again, you don't, I don't necessarily think you need to go on external courses. Mm. I think that's a little bit of an old school way of thinking um, where you need to you know, book yourself onto a two, three day course at an academy in, yeah. in London and, and go and better yourself. Like, I think we live in a digital age now where yeah. um, it's just as accessible to watch someone cut hair on a screen and learn in your own time and practice yeah. than it ever has been. And um, I think that is kind of where things are moving to in the yeah. future and have been for a little while now, yeah. but everything's been accelerated because of, of course, yeah. the recent year. Yeah. That's a positive thing to come out of the world, you know, is the fact that the dig digital education has become so accessible and we feel we feel very normal um, learning in that way now. You know, whereas before it was it was kind of venturing into the unknown and the need to to be in a room to learn something has, has changed, I think, really dramatically. Yeah, I mean anything when it's new seems alien to anyone. Um, doesn't matter what you're doing, whether yeah. it's doing fitness online, whether it's learning to cut hair, whether it's learning to cook. You know, you can literally do anything online these yeah. days. You know, that's yeah. the power of um, first of all YouTube, yeah. and then and then obviously more advanced education platforms and things like that, yeah. where where they come in. And I think what you've seen over the last year is the people that have adapted and have um, taken on this new role of learning or teaching um, digitally are the ones that are, are at the forefront of that business now. Um, yeah. And the people that haven't decided to, or they're still waiting for, you know, um, academies to open in person and haven't yeah. done anything digitally are actually going to get very much left behind yeah. um, in the near future. Yeah, I completely get that. So I think it's all about adapting, pivoting to your surroundings and yeah. your environment and doing what you can in the most positive way possible to better yourself and others around you. And I, I think that's great. And I also think it's great that it's changed, it's made education accessible on a global level now, because I, I remember when I was training, you know, I, I was fortunate, I think, to, to live in and around London. So mm -hmm. I could go to arguably some of the best academies in the world. But then I, you know, people I speak to now who live in other parts of the world or even other parts of the UK, that's a, it's a commitment to get to, to a city centre to learn. And now you can be anywhere in the world and learn from the best artists in the world. And yeah. that's, that's amazing, right? It, exactly. And it, it, like you said, it is a massive positive um, in many, many ways. Yeah, and just like you said, um, it is a massive positive um, about that. And you know, I was I was training to be a hairdresser in probably not too similar times to you, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, yeah. I, I went to the academy and did an apprenticeship in London at one yeah. of the top places, and um, there was no such thing as <laughs> online education back no. then. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but you look at it now, and actually, you can do that still, and will be able to do that still. But if you don't want to do that, you also have an alternative, which is much cheaper, much more relaxed in the in your own time. Exactly, so. Yeah. If anything, learning and digital education is only opening up education to much more people yeah. um, around the world. Yeah, completely. So, just to touch on this, I've just finished side number one, and what we did is we worked two to one, three to two, four to three, five to three. So that last one behind the ear there, that section number five, was over-directed pretty much back two positions on the head to hit that corner of the head. Okay, so there's five sections on this side. We're now gonna resection that middle profile line back off down the middle, and then we're gonna work another four sections replicating what we've just done on side number one. Does anything, does anything change now in terms of your position or the client's position for you when you move over to this, this other side? So the only thing that changes is where my feet move. Okay. okay so if I still wanna work on the inside of my finger, creating this graduated shape, okay, I'm always using that middle as my profile. So I work from the middle and I work two to one, three to two, etc. And my feet moved this way. Okay. And now I'm working through the opposite side. I'm gonna set myself back in the center. And now I'm gonna be pushing the hair away from myself and moving my body around this way as I work around the head. Oh, okay. So it's literally little micro movements with my feet this way or this way. Apart from that, my back stays the same, yeah. my finger position stays the same, the length stays the same. And then you essentially, you're, you mimic it whilst in, a, you mimic the shape whilst in a different position though, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah Great. exactly, yeah. So yeah, I've go. always got a guide. Yeah. The only time I didn't have a guide was on section number section one, one where I was creating my length. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So what we're doing now is sectioning the middle profile back off and then section number two on side number two. 
Again, you can see that I'm working really nice and um, cleanly with discipline, with the way that I'm combing the hair, grooming the hair and controlling the hair. And you can see I'm using these small little metal clips to really keep everything separated away. And the, 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 the place where most people get um, muddled up and confused with a long hair is keeping the surface area clean. Yeah. As soon as you're not, your sections aren't clean, you've got a piece of hair in here and here and here and there's no clips separating away, people get lost, they, get, they start getting flustered and hot and they just get messy with their work and then that's when things go wrong, yeah? So with longer hair, the discipline with cleanliness and the sections are really, really important to keep throughout the whole haircut. Yeah. yeah. If you set off in that direction, if you set off with that plan, then that plan has to stay the whole way through, right? Correct. Even yeah. if your next client's waiting for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but yeah. when you're in that situation, you've just got to question yourself, what type of hairstylist do I want to be? Do I want to be someone that takes pride and care in every single haircut that I do? Yeah. And um, doesn't matter how many times I've cut this person's hair, or do I want to just rush this one so I can get onto my next one or maybe get home and watch the football game that's on? Yeah. You know, it, it really depends on who you are and what you're trying to achieve in your career. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm always striving for excellence and to be the best. Doesn't matter how many times I've cut a haircut, a person's hair, the same style. The best bit of advice I ever got um, as I was coming up through the ranks was really make sure that it doesn't matter what you're doing and how many times you've done it, try and do it to the best of your ability every mm. single time. And it just always gave me motivation in the back of my head to better myself. Doesn't matter how many times I've cut a long square layer on a mannequin head teaching people. I, it's probably in the hundreds. Yeah. And every single time I do it, even now, I try and do it to the best I've ever done it and yeah. get the best result. And yeah. that's kind of the mentality that you need to keep yeah. um, to get better. Because that just drives you forward all the time. It means you're never standing still, right? Which is great. Exactly, man. And um, no one really likes to stand still, even nice. if someone likes to be comfortable in life. Um, deep down, they still want to experience. We all want new. progress, don't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Got a question around education because it obviously is very important to you, and uh, uh, knowing you and knowing um, what you do uh, career-wise, but also just listening to you speak about your own learning and self-discipline. Um, so tell me, why do you think education is so important? As a whole. As a whole, yeah. As a whole, I mean, education is as important as anything you know they say some of the smartest people in the world never stop learning until the day that they die um, and it's true you know like if, if, if you want to be the best at something or even improve in something then you have to learn something new um, and step out your comfort zone yeah. and that's what education is about it's about doing something that you don't normally do and learning something that you've never learned before yeah. so if you're trying to better yourself and, and 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 become better at something you have to either watch someone try something, experiment. You, you, have, you have to do something physically to get better. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't just sit there and watch someone and expect to be better at cutting hair yeah, after you've watched them. Yeah. Um, that's the first stage. The first stage is actually consuming the information. Yeah. The second stage is actually practicing it. Yeah. Um, and without practicing it and consuming that education, then you're not going to get better. So no. as, a, as, a, as a whole, you know, I try and educate myself in lots of things all the time, every single day, you know, not, not just in hair, but mm. in hair, yeah, if I didn't practice and, and learn new things all the time, you know, I wouldn't be teaching myself. No. Somebody once said to me to actively seek dis discomfort. Yeah. And that, I think, has been a principle I've, uh, I've lived by when it comes to learnings, particularly, because if I ever feel comfortable, I feel like I've got to go further to expand right and I yeah think that, it drives you forward as well yeah exactly like you know like staying in your comfort zone is 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 not what we're made for as human no. beings you know no. we, are, we, we are made to experience new yeah. and experience different yeah. as that's what that's what gets our juices going yeah um and it's important that we keep doing that whether that's just cutting hair and trying new haircuts or whether that's trying education and standing yeah. on stage in front of 10,000 people yeah. and like whatever however big your goal is always try and aim for it and don't don't be don't don't be scared to go down that yeah, route great so we're on now section number four number four is getting pushed back to number three and we've got one section left which is behind the ear so again we should match up the same amount of sections as side number one okay so that great. that's how we get that balance using our numbers um, as, sorry, our sections as number. Great. So there we go, there's that angle. On this side of the head, you can see it's a little bit easier because on this side, I kind of have the head to battle against. Yeah. On this side of the head, 
I've got no head to battle against. So yeah. actually, the, you can see the scissor angle can just stay a bit more classic. Um, I could spin it over and use it in that way again. Don't need to. No. So you can see I only really use the scissor in that way if I need to, yeah. if I feel I need to. Okay, so now we're moving on to the last section at the back, which is section number five, which is, remember, gonna be pushed back into the third section, right on the corner of the head before it rounds into the ear, okay? So completely replicating what we've done on the first side. And there should be less and less hair coming off as we've worked around the head, as it's got further to travel into the guide. So I shouldn't be expecting to see a lot of hair coming off now. Just the last little bits of the ends. And again, my scissor can be held in a very classic way now, as there's no head shape in the way of my, my wrist. And there we go. Okay, so before we move on to the, the front panels, we're just gonna give it a very visual cross check, make sure the balance is feeling good. Got a big question for you while you're doing big that, question, Charlie. Big yeah. question, right. save this one for the last part of the back. So for you, what's been the biggest lesson of the last year? Seeing that we've been focused on like education, self-development, for you personally, what's been the biggest thing that you've gained in the last year? Um, I guess confidence in going down different routes. Um, I, I was doing, before the year just started, I was working for another company before I launched my own company. Yeah. And I was doing kind of the same thing for about six years where I was traveling around the world and teaching and doing seminars and so on. And I kind of got into a very comfortable circle. Um, yeah. okay. And nothing was really testing me. Like some of the places I was going to and the crowds I was doing in front of was getting bigger and better, but it was technically still the same thing that I was doing. Okay. Um, and I felt like I needed to change. And I think last year, I, when I launched my own business, um, not only did I do that, which was kind of stepping out of my comfort zone anyway, yeah. obviously the pandemic came along. Yeah. Um, and then I had to completely reorganize the type of work that I was doing yeah. as well on top of that. So it was just a huge learning curve, but it made me grow personally. Um, it made me grow business men wise yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah, word that is yeah. yeah made me grow um it just made me grow much bigger and better and yeah. um, now i have a, a much stronger backbone of what i want to do and how i do it yeah okay. um yeah so it, it, it just grew me massively rather than, yeah right? rather than yeah. letting last year defeat me i let it uh, i allowed it for me to grow yeah, into great. something even bigger and better great. i think amazing yeah right so just what's important is that with this type of hair you know, you can see there's lots of movement in it and curl in it. So I'm not looking for something like a really straight line. I'm looking for, I'm looking to see how the hair's reacting and moving at the length and, yeah. and, and stuff that, that I've cut it to. So that's what's important here. So it's, it's really very visual, this cross check. I'm not gonna be um, working really clean sections and making sure that the shape is precise because it's never gonna be in that shape and he's mm. never gonna wear it like that, yeah. dead straight, okay? Remember, we're working with very natural, organic hair here where the client doesn't probably do too much to it on a daily basis. So the way that I need to cut it and the shape that it needs to be is a way that it's gonna look good naturally without really doing much to it. Yeah. So what I'm gonna be doing in terms of cross-checking is literally pulling out the same kind of areas of the hair and making sure that visually the length actually pretty much coexists with one another. Okay, um, right. And that's important. If one was ridiculously shorter than the other, like one was here and one was here, yeah, yeah like something would be wrong yeah. in the cut there. <laughs> Revisit as, that. Yeah, as long as it's pretty much balanced visibly and it looks good, yeah. then I'm happy with that. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for right now. So I'm really gonna move it around, get that kind of natural movement in it, really bring that natural curl out in it. And already I can see what I, the, the work that I've done has made it look way flatter towards the back of the head. Rem, rem, remember before, we had that kind of rounded shape where the weight was sitting through here, and then we had that narrow flick out towards the back. Yeah. Now we can see we have the weight sitting on top of the occipital bone, and then it's flat from there. So as he now keeps and maintains or grows his hair in this style, it's gonna grow out in a much better shape. Yeah, great. And that use of graduation to, to essentially fill that void that was there has been uh, really effective, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it would be down to me now, if I did want to bring the length up slightly at the nape, if you wanted to have that bit more um, room for grow, growth and grow out, then yeah, I would bring that up in length. But I think it looks great the way it is. Yeah. And remember, we have taken a little bit off the bottom already from internally cutting it. Would you ever approach it the other way where the length was the first area you worked on and that dictated the graduation or is this always the kind of approach you take? Yeah, again, so it, something is never always. Yeah. Um, it, it is all, 
everything should be approached to what you're working on. Yeah. Um, so I never like to say never or always, okay. realistically, yeah. with cutting hair. Otherwise, you'll just put yourself in a box and yeah. you'll struggle to get really good results. Yeah. Um, what I like to study and look at is what am I trying to achieve here? Okay, that's the number one question. What yeah. am I trying to achieve and how am I going to do it? If I was, if the client had really long hair down to the shoulders and he wanted it to this length here, I would first of all take away the external length to the position that I want to see it at yeah. and then maybe work some internal shape after. Okay, because the length is more work than anything. Okay. My client here, he wasn't looking to lose too much length, meaning that I know I can work internally, change the shape, make it sit better and a little bit of length might get taken off at the same time and we're all happy. Yeah, yeah, amazing, thank you. Cool, so the next step that we're gonna move on to are the two side panels, where you can see the sections are working through the curvature of the head, where the head starts to round downwards. And we're not gonna be doing too much to this area, as this is gonna be where the weight is sitting behind the ear, okay? We're more gonna be focusing on the two top panels as we go on to the front part of the haircut. Now, what we commonly see on a man's haircut is something that should be shorter in length through the front panel and longer in length through the back panel. This gives it that slight distinction and break up from the front to the back. If we saw something that was completely the same length from the front to the back, it could perceive to be a little bit more feminine and kind of like bob-like, okay. which some men don't kind of want. Yeah. Um, on some people it looks really cool, yeah, yeah, which, which I have cut, yeah. but on this type of haircut, it's a little bit more classic um, in terms of the kind of mid-length to longer hair. So we're gonna keep that difference in length from short so long, as you can see, we've already got it, but I'm just gonna strengthen away the ends. Cool. So what we're gonna do through the sides is actually bring everything down, and we're gonna keep the majority of the length towards the front area, and we're gonna take away some of that weight that's sitting behind it. We're gonna be using minimum elevation, working through our fingers, and working a solid club cutting line. Oh, that's really interesting. So there's like a, a distinct change in approach here compared to the back. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of, yeah. I think it, it, in some kind of real classic terms, the graduation within, for some people have felt like very, it would have felt very natural to follow that through, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so doing exactly the same from the back to the front. Exactly, it feels yeah. like that's quite a normal process, whereas this is like a, a movement away from that and a, a differentiation in technique. Yeah, the way that I like to work with um, hair is very organically and um, it's kind of more of a feeling when I'm cutting hair. Mm. So just because I cut the back a certain way, why should that mean that I cut the sides or the top in the same way? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, this hair through the side of the head is completely different to the back. Yeah. I know personally that on most men's haircuts and even women's haircuts, the back of the head here is generally the thickest and densest yeah. area of the hair. So we need to approach this in a way where we're generally removing weight. When we start looking at the sides of the head, this is generally a bit finer, slightly less and sparser hair. So actually, I want to probably start to build up some more weight yeah. through that area. Makes, so can you see the difference in side to back? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we need to start doing. We need to start really thinking about the head of hair as more of a material and what sort of material we want to create and what length we want to keep it to, rather than just like, I'm going to use this technique on this haircut because I'm, I think it works or yeah. I know it works on this client. Yeah, every client is different. And it's challenging that kind of um, that that con conventional thinking. It's like that rigid thinking of that. This is what I'm doing underneath. This is what I'm doing on top. You know, yeah, it's, it's I mean, look. I think um, hairdressing training and barbering training, when it's taught at a very basic beginner level, is it kind of keeps you thinking very one-dimensional um, mm. and because it kind of builds you up in confidence. And I don't think there's much wrong with that, but once you start to become confident um, and competent in the way that you cut hair yeah. and, you, and you, you have cut hair for quite a while, I think you need to start exploring um, different ways and ideas of looking at hair and, and, and cutting hair. Yeah. Otherwise you'll never grow and yeah. you'll just stay in your comfort zone. Yeah, completely. And like on a pure practical level, I suppose keeping that weight around the front is, really important if if like you've done here tucking it behind the ear that weight is super important for that right like for it to maintain that shape yeah if i was to go in and, and, and maybe layer the side through here which on in some cases on longer hair i would but not in this case because of the length and stuff um i would lose a lot of length and weight from this area and it would become sparser and actually what it would do is it would expand more on the side of Bashir's head and it would become much more of a rounder shape. Yeah. I, I, I want it to become quite streamlined and flat and tuck behind the ear, meaning I need to have more weight in that zone. So once I've 
I've got that length, and again, we've club cut that length in through there. We've kept the length towards the, the front temple, and then we've taken some of that weight off behind it and shortening that through. And as long as now I tuck that length behind the ear and it sits there quite flat and beautifully, that's the optimum length that I want to be taking that to. So again, th that, that is so simple. <laughs> like it's such a simple yeah. cut that I'm doing there, but so many people would try and overcomplicate that area yeah. of the head, you know? Yeah, completely. In terms of technique and trends and ideas, what do you see as kind of emerging in those areas? with men's hair in mind? I mean, from what I've seen over the last year, um, most guys have grown Great. their hair out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of certain, um, yeah, yeah. certain aspects yeah. of life yeah. and hairdressers haven't been open for a while. Yeah. Um, but I think the good thing about that is that people are actually embracing it yeah, for once. And most of the time people only grew their hair out if they really wanted to. But yeah. a lot of people haven't had the choice um, to go and get their hair cut. But rather than complaining about it, they're actually enjoying it Embracing and it's it, yeah. nice to see that men have become even more comfortable um, and are enjoying the longer length hair especially for people from a hairdressing background yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's nice and then again it's pushing the barbers um, you know people from more of a barbering background to get better in longer hair because they have to now yeah 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 um, and that's just how fashion cycles work you yeah. know like through the 70s 80s 90s hairstyles generically go through phases from long, short, mid-length and so on, so on, so on, but in slightly different styles. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing now again. So as us as creatives and, and stylists, it's just important that we keep in front of those trends and we're comfortable in cutting any type of hair. And they're driven, I guess, by, you know, by society anyway. So this is just another example of being driven by what society can and can't do at the moment. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to talk briefly about what I'm doing now. So you can see that the length from the side panel that was cut down here is now going to act as a guide for the top area. Ah, okay. okay. We're going to pull everything out completely perpendicular from the head, from the central part in that he wears it in, until I hit my guide at the bottom. And we're going to be taking away that corner of weight on the corner of the head there. Okay. So rather than cutting the top up here, where I'd be almost guessing to what length I need to visually connect it to. Mm. I'm gonna be now cutting everything out into that shape, creating my guide, and actually that length in the center where the parting is, is actually not being cut at all either. Mm. So we're kind of taking this like triangular corner out of weight there and making everything much more fluid from the top to the side. There we go. So again, not something that most people would generally do, but again, a really simple way to approach this haircut. Because what I'm not looking to do is, I don't need to completely connect the tops of the sides. And this is where people's perception, or again, of maybe quite basic cutting and a basic way of getting taught would be. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of people think that you need to connect like here to here and here to here for it to be a full haircut. Mm. But actually, working with this connection really allows you to become much more creative. Mm. Um, and I probably use this connection in the majority of my guys' haircuts that yeah. I do because not because I'm trying to be creative or trying to do something because you need it. You yeah. need this connection within haircuts. Um, as long, you know, my golden rule is as long as it looks good yeah. and it makes sense to do disconnection, why not? Then what? Then yeah, yeah, then, yeah. then use it. Yeah, completely. You know? If yeah. something doesn't, if if you're doing it for the sake of it or trying to do it just to do it, it normally doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if if there's a reason behind it and it makes sense and it looks good, then use this connection as it's a great tool, but yeah. Are there any, seeing that you're working on a longer length today and that kind of trend towards longer hair, are there any key tips that you would give or key focuses that you would give when working on longer hair? Because as we said before, I think it's something that some people find find daunting because there's less experience of doing it. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't be put off by the amount of hair on the head. <laughs> it just because it's, the, the haircut doesn't get harder because there's more hair. Yeah. It, you know, if, if anything, this is why we use sections to simplify and break up the haircut yeah. and work in smaller zones and sections on the head shape in, in, in person. What you need to become comfortable with is working on different hair types, different hair lengths, and understanding that they all need to be respected in, in different ways. Um, just as if you were using a pair of clippers, you need to respect the detail that you need to use and the, the clipper motion and et cetera, et cetera. With longer hair, it's generally the discipline and the comb and the technique of your body position and posture that get you the good results. Yeah. You know, so 
Every single thing and type of hair that you work on has its own kind of set of rules that you need to understand and it's important that we understand what they are and how to get better at them. Great. So we can see that this side of the head now is completed. Um, everything was brought out perpendicular from the head, connected it into the lower panel and now we have this almost triangular shape building up there where that corner of weight is sitting. And the length should tuck behind the ear beautifully like this and then that should leave us with that sideburn area exposed, okay? So what we're gonna do is just give that a slight bit of a tidy up very naturally with the scissors, nothing too aggressive or too short. So we're just gonna go in with the scissors and just work in this way with the points. Again, I want that soft, natural look. And if I was to use a, you know, like a pair of clippers right now, it would kind of go against the whole look that I'm trying yeah. to create. I get that. Most guys with long hair don't want something that's super short and shaved around the sideburns. Mm. I know I certainly don't. About you? Oh yeah, I mean, I tried. <laughs> my beard is the only bit which can be worked on these days, so <laughs> clippers are never used. There we go. So you can see that there looks a much neater. I mean, it's completely up to you and the client's discretion on how short you go and how neat you make it. But yeah. me personally, I still want to have a bit of depth there and a bit of softness around the ear. Yeah. So for me now, that side is completed. I can keep that comb down flat against the surface yeah. and just kind of let that start to dry naturally and organically and we're gonna focus on that last panel. Again, comb it into the side panel that we've cut, and we're gonna start from section one, just in front of the apex, vertical section, into the side panel. And what we're gonna do is bring everything out completely vertical into my side panel there, and there's the length. And again, just to clarify, look, there's the length at the top. It's completely in line with the length that we cut through the side there as well, yeah? So again, I didn't mean for that to happen, but because of the choice of lengths that I've decided to take the other zones, it's naturally and organically matched up to the other panels, just, just by visually finding that balance. Yeah. Um, and I guess that comes from a little bit of experience, yeah. but at the same time, you know, it, it's no guesswork. No. And so I've got a question about how you would advise your clients mm. to, to, to maintain their hair once longer. Because as you said, a lot of people have gone from shorter lengths through to longer lengths and that changes completely the dynamics of your kind of day-to-day -day styling and day-to-day -day maintenance. So is there anything that you would advise your clients to, to do in order to keep their hair looking at, their, at its best when they're not seeing you? Yeah, great question. And I think, again, where people get confused in client-wise is they think the longer the hair, the more they have to do to it. Yeah. And again, it's almost the opposite to that. Yeah. Um, for me, I like to think of as super short hair, as really easy to manage, really long hair, easy to manage, yeah. and the kind of mid-length styles where you've actually got to do something to it, yeah. more difficult to achieve yeah. styles, you know, yeah. so like the quiffs, maybe even slightly longer crops, yeah. mid-length kind of, you know, slick backs. They're generally harder for clients to manage on a daily basis and, yeah. and get looking good. When you get to length um, hair this long or go super short like buzz cut and skin fades and really short hair, you barely have to do anything to it. It's all about the, the, the hair care itself. Yeah. So what I would advise my model here to do is not even really do too much to it on a daily basis at all. Generally, you're gonna make sure that you're using a good shampoo and conditioner yeah. so the hair stays in good condition and it stays clean. Probably wash your hair like twice a week at this kind of length yeah. unless it gets really greasy and then use a really natural organic product which has very light styling involved in it. Yeah. Whether that's kind of like a light styling product with like a leave-in conditioner, yeah. um, if your hair can get away with it or if your hair needs that little bit more kind of grit in it you could use a bit of sea salt spray or like a very light matte paste but you wouldn't even want to apply that every day that would no. be kind of like every few days um, yeah. and what you'll find is that after one or two days of washing you after washing your hair your hair is probably sitting at its optimum anyway mm. so people with this length hair don't generally like to wash their hair too much as dirty hair is better um, with a very fine line <laughs> yeah. in that yeah so actually it's very easy to maintain and style and manage this hair it's, the average person would look at that and be like, oh, that looks like it'd be such hard work. Yeah. That's, that's completely BS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So again, moving into now the next section, you can see there's, there's minimal to come off of this. And what we're actually going to do is over direct that, that fringe panel, the last section, back into the previous. So everything through the side panel, the only section that gets over directed backwards is the last one on the fringe. 
Reason being is because we just want to maintain more weight and length at the front there um, compared to the side here, right? So there we go, side number two. Again, what we should see is something that just sits behind the ear where the weight tucks behind. Absolutely effortless styling and control here. Again, we're gonna just tidy up the sideburn area, comb everything back and just give it a little tidy up. Nice and controlled. You can see I'm using my middle finger here as a little base for the scissor to rest on. So I've got nice control. So that is the complete wet shape cut now. What we're gonna do is move on to applying some product and working it into the style that we eventually want it to see. So moving on to the styling process now of the haircut. And what we're gonna do is make sure that the hair is consistently wet um, throughout, as some of the hair now will be completely dry and some of it will be slightly wet from when we were cutting it still. So rather than applying products and putting the hair dry straight onto the head, what we could do is over dry some areas of the hair and still have some areas quite wet. So I really just want to go through the hair and just give it a very light spritz and just make sure that it's kind of got that consistently even damp around the hair before we go any further. I don't want to wet too much, otherwise I'll be there for ages drying and that's not gonna be um, great for me when I'm working to a time schedule in the salon. So I've got a question for you, Charlie. Yes. In terms of like looking forward to this year, I'm mm -hmm. sure it's an exciting year for you. Can you tell us a bit more about what sort of plans you've got for 2021 and beyond? Yeah, so obviously a lot of my plans did change from last year um, and I focused on making a lot more online content, which is going really, really well. Yeah. But one of my main goals was to get more into the fashion industry um, okay. and start doing more shoots and working with brands and agencies. And that's kind of like what I really wanted to push myself in as it was a sector of the industry that I was less experienced in, I guess, yeah. because of putting so much emphasis on education for so long. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to step out my comfort zone again yeah. and kind of test myself. So I've been doing um, that for the last six months. I've been working right. with a few really big brands quite closely um, on the regular. And also I've recently signed to a agency oh, um, where I'm going to be doing a lot more um, session work, which is really exciting. Yeah, yeah, really exciting. You. Thank you. So that's kind of gonna, that's kind of going to be my main focus for the next um, for, for the foreseeable future. To and be honest with you. So what's that like? Fashion editorial. Um, fashion editorial. Yeah. yeah, like magazine work. Yeah. Just just session work really. Right. Um, some sometimes it might be working on fashion weeks for some stuff as well. Um, you just kind of never really know in that industry. No, <laughs> to be honest. Comes, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of really finding that out. You know, yeah. you can get asked to do a job like a day before it comes about, yeah. and um, you're kind of expected to maybe try and do the best you can to to do it. So it's it's a bit more spontaneous yeah. and things pop up out of nowhere and I do like that I side of it great though, right? but yeah. also I quite like my stability within my online stuff that yeah. I'm doing and, and my education yeah kind so of best both, I've best kind of got the best of both worlds, worlds yeah, yeah, yeah. which is what I wanted I wanted that flexibility with with my own company and that's yeah. what I've got yeah. so so in terms of drying all I've done is applied a little bit of matte paste, which is a very light styling product. It's given the hair a little bit more moisture and you won't even notice he's got it in the hair at all. It's just gonna add that little bit more definition with the styling and bring the curls out a little bit more. It's interesting, I think, that you've applied it prior to drying, because I think, again, I know we're talking a lot about the kind of conventional norms, right? But I yeah. think a lot of people would reach for a matte paste as the kind After of final a finishing step. product, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been using matte paste in um, damp hair to dry in the style for years now, and yeah. I probably don't even use it in dry hair anymore. Oh, okay. not, not that it's wrong, and nah. you know, but I just I always like to have that kind of like movable natural hair. For me, putting products more into damper hair will allow the hair to dry in a natural way and yeah. still being able to run your fingers through it without it, without it looking like you've got something in it. So it's like a level of it's like diluted slightly, I guess. So it's kind yeah. of softens the it just allows the, the hair to kind of absorb in the product mm. more and, and 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 kind of use it as a styling product rather than if you place too much product on dry hair, it could coat the hair and yeah, sit yeah. on top of the hair and not be absorbed too much. That's a great piece of information, yeah. I think. I'll remember that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, a diffuser end on the end of my 
hairdryer and we're going to put a low speed heat um, on the hair just so it dries it really naturally and really softly and doesn't overheat the hair too much. The client at this stage doesn't need to do anything apart from sit there and just let the hair dry naturally. You're probably going to dry the hair to about 80 to 90 percent, let the last percentage dry on its own. Okay, so as we can see, the hair itself is about 80 to 90% dry. It's just got that last little bit of dampness in it, which, I, which will probably dry in the next about two to three minutes on, on its own. And what it will allow it to do is just have that more kind of natural shape. Um, if you try and over dry something, it never actually looks its best with, with, with this length hair. Yeah. I think that I've, I've made that mistake so many times on, on people's hairstyles. When, when I've over styled it, 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 it never looks its best. And sometimes when a client styles their own hair, it looks better than when you've done it. Yeah. Have you ever had that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you want that kind of, you want the hair's natural movement to do the last bit of work for you, right? Precisely that, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm making sense. the hair work for me rather yeah. than having to yeah. do, yeah, right. working smart, yeah. you know, some people would say. Yeah. So um, again, I'm just gonna kind of move the hair around, just get my fingers through it, just get that last little bit of heat and, and friction into the hair. That's great. Yeah, but we can really see that we've got that nice bit of weight that's sitting up onto the curvature there. Then we've got that little bit of softness where we did that bit of a layer throughout just above the ear. And then as we spin it around to the back area, we can see that we have a completely different shape that we have through the back now, yeah? So rather than seeing that really kind of harsh bowl shape, that really big dip, we obviously yeah. see the weight now sitting all around this big band here. And it, it just looks like it's kind of one one shape rather than two or three different shapes within the haircut. It's so the shape's so transformed by by those slight changes in where the weight's built up and the distribution of weight yeah, changes but so massively. I didn't cut that much hair. No. That's the beautiful yeah. thing here. So this is a prime example of understanding what to cut and how to cut rather than cutting too much off. Yeah. And what a lot of people would have done here is been like, if this client would have come into the salon, they would have been like, cool, so let's just kind of give it a bit of a trim all over, freshen it up and keep growing it. Yeah. And it might make a client kind of feel good on the day, kind of getting the shampoo and the cut and the dry, but actually the shape would still be the same yeah. and it'd still be in the same position a few weeks later and, and, and it'd have the same problem again. So I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm solving the problem for the client for him to be able to then have a better haircut in the future. Yeah. Great, yeah. excellent. So we're kind of just problem solvers for clients. Yeah, That's great. what we're doing. Yeah, so yeah. Com completely, completely. Yeah. I've got a question um, outside of hair, actually. So yeah. for you, um, although, although I know how busy you are with work and stuff, but outside of, outside of hair, what sort of things do you do to keep yourself entertained? What sort of things are you into? Well, I'm most definitely um, a firm believer of kind of trying to hit all three pillars in life, where it's kind of mental, physical and spiritual. Okay. Um, and physically, I try and do as much exercise as possible yeah. um, that my day allows me to where I'm up at about 6, 6.30 in the morning, I either go for a run, um, I head out on my bike, right. um, I walk the dog, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like normal stuff. Um, and then also mentally, um, I'm trying to learn languages at the moment. Okay. I'm actually learning Spanish ah. at the moment. Yeah, I'm not going to embarrass myself. On, no, I'm on not going to embarrass myself either. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm learning Spanish. Yeah. Um, as that's really cool and exciting. Um, I am always building my business and yeah. building relationships there. Yeah. I'm just kind of like mentally stimulating myself. Um, I'm reading a lot of books, yeah. just learning new things. Every, every day I'm trying to progress as a person, yeah. um, not just within hair. Just work, and yeah. then spiritually, yeah, I'm kind of on this kind of spiritual journey at the moment. I'm, I'm kind of getting into meditation and things oh, wow, like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm kind of trying to hit all different angles of, yeah. of growth at, yeah. at, at the moment, um, which changes all the time. Like. I always feel like I'm a different person than I was six months ago. Yeah. And I like that feeling. And that balance across those three pillars, I think is so important for, for everybody. So important. It's just growth, yeah. growth as people, you know, as growth within cutting hair or growth within anything. I think if you feel growth and you feel different, 
in a positive way, that's a great thing. You know, we're designed to grow. And it affects you across your personal life. Everything feels better then. Personal business, yeah. everything, everything improves. Look, if it? one of them pillars is removed, if I haven't done exercise for a week, yeah. I don't feel as motivated at work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. As simple as yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I have to keep all three of them things going for me yeah. to be at my optimum best. Yeah. 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 Right. So finished look as we can see we, we we finished the hairspray off with a really light hold hairspray again i still want him to be able to move his hair around yeah but it will just give it that little bit more of a firm fix and it'll get rid of any kind of like strays and frizziness through the top yeah again it's still got that last little few percent of dry in here right now which i'm gonna leave and let just kind of do its thing but generically if we look at the haircut now it, it looks in a completely different shape much more of a like stronger kind of like masculine box shape from yeah. the front where the weight's sitting behind the ears yeah. and then obviously if we look at the back area we've got that beautiful movement and curl still where we've enhanced the movement and we've reduced any kind of unwanted shape and weight through the back yeah it's so cool thank you charlie i love it no, so, pleasure. such a such a such a simple approach but really well thought out and amazingly executed. So cheers, mate. Yeah, yeah, you know, really I, like I hope that what you guys have watched and learned from this is that this whole method and process was really simple and easy to follow. And I would suggest you go out and try it yourselves on this type of hair. So I also want to remind you that we are offering all of you 70% off MDB education. Head to MDB education forward slash gift and use the code cut to redeem that 70% discount. You'll also find on MDB Education three more full-length tutorials with Charlie so you can continue learning and being inspired by Charlie Gray. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you soon.